Well, folks, here we are. I'm a first timer. Never been a diesel mechanic or anything. This is my 5065E. As you can see, I got her broken down, got the top off, the cover off, but I got problems with this. I got this a three cylinder. I got to rebuild it. The uh, compression on it is pretty low. I think they're reading about 150 PSI. So, uh, first time getting into an engine like this on a John Deere, but uh, I got the manual, uh, which I have here. Um, and this is the manual from John Deere, which is the 2.9 liter diesel engine, power tech. Uh, so that's what I'm going to do. It's going to be a long process. I'm hoping to film it all and give the results at the end. But uh, got all the parts from John Deere. I think we're without the all the replacement parts without the turbocharger is for me about 1,800 bucks so far. I'm going to have to go out and buy a turbocharger uh, that was recommended to do. So this is the 5065E. Here are all the parts um, that they recommended, you know, gaskets and things like that. Um, you know, pistons and liners. This is uh, one of the liners right here. I can turn that over for you. There's the liner. There's the old piston liner right there. So, and inside this kit, you also get you also get the piston itself right here. Comes with the rings on it. So, my hope is that I can, you know, replace these and make it happen. But uh, so I got uh, you know liners, rings, gaskets. Some hoses, some pipes, some O-rings. I got bolts, um, all kinds of stuff here. So we shall see what happens, but um, it's going to be a process for sure. I'm going to follow the manual and book step by step. So I will get back to you guys in a. All right, folks, here we are. Uh, I am two hours into the job, and this is where I am. I basically took off the exhaust manifold. That ran along the top, uh, the air cleaner or the air, the air filter, the radiator. Uh, once I got the radiator out and uh, the battery out, I was able. To, I had to loosen the shroud for, that connects to the um, to the to the back of the radiator to get the radiator out. I take the shroud off. There are only four bolts on it. Pretty easy. Pulled out the radiator. Pull off the shroud. Then I took off the belt and the uh, and the fan off the and, and there's a pulley uh, that piece that goes over here as well that uh, that supplies is the uh, that actually holds the uh, the fan belt so uh, that piece isn't on there so about two hours in and now I'm working on the turbocharger this here is the turbocharger um, I'm taking these four bolts out right here uh, and then this unit uh, once I take off this uh, supply uh, and the uh, return down here. Uh, on the other side, I'll show you. Pretty easy to come out. Um, let's see. See, I pulled pulled this out of here. Uh, this just unscrews as well. All right, folks. So we're just getting started back here, day two. And what I need to do is re remove this rocker arm assembly. And the, once I do that, I basically have to take this bolt out, this bolt and this bolt, and take these nuts out uh, off the uh, push rods. And uh, this, this top unit right here will at least pull right off. And then these push rods I should be able to just pull right out. So I'm going to go do that now. And then after that I think I'm going to probably start taking off some electronics and probably the uh, fuel injection system here. Uh, getting close to pulling the cylinder head so we'll see. Alright folks, so here's where we are. I got the rocker uh, assembly off and the push rods are out. Um, I've since also taken out the fuel pump here. I've moved this electronic bracket. Um, I've taken off the water pump, which are all actually pretty easy, just following the instructions. The water pump came off relatively easy. Now I believe what I'm going to do, since I'm rebuilding the motor, the water pump I believe was fine, but 
it's always recommended when you rebuild the motor that uh, that you replace the water pump there you know because you, you don't want all your work to go to hell when your water pump goes bad and you overheat the engine and uh, you know I guess that's always a possibility with any tractor but so I also took off the took out the thermostat and the thermostat uh, case and uh, there was a tube that went along with it back to the water pump, but uh, that, that's out of there. So I think where I am now is, you know, I think um, looking at this, um, I'm going to deviate from the instructions a little bit because um, I really don't need to remove the, uh, the starter or, um, you know, the oil pump. Um, I did remove this here. Uh, just to get get this bracket off because that bracket actually sits over here um, So I did do that So I'll uh, I'll get that back together eventually But other other than over that I mean the fuel injection pumps here that doesn't need to come off But I'm gonna take off these these guys here uh, You know the injectors are here one two and three So these are the these are the feeds for the injectors and these are the returns uh, these two guys here are the returns so uh, I'm gonna get 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 this off of here take this off I'm gonna get these returns off and then I'm gonna pull the injectors here and then I'm gonna take off take off this guy the the manifold the exhaust manifold and uh, that should be getting me pretty close then I'm gonna be able to take out the cylinder head bolts um, now one thing it's recommended in the uh, manual is that um, to check the torque of these bolts uh, each one as you take them out just in case there are complications and um, the cylinder head um, <clears throat> if, if, if it comes up with issues with the cylinder head I guess it's recommended um, you know if you have the torque uh, what the torque was for each one of those bolts you can always go back to John Deere and they might be able to provide some insight as to what happened so I'm gonna I'm gonna log the torque on on each one of the bolts and keep them in the same spot um, how you do that is basically before you remove a bolt, you put a you put a mark on there, and uh, what you do is you, you turn the bolt back, and then and then you, you then you start tightening up. You tighten it back up to the line that you mark there, and record the torque with the torque wrench. So I'm going to do that with each one, um, and then after you know I think uh, other than this electrical connection here in the back, which I, I really don't know what it's for. There was a single a single wire here that that plugged into that. It's some sort of sensor, um, but um, I'm going to take that off, um, and then other than that, I think the cylinder head should be ready to come off. So um, that's pretty much where we are. Um, I guess that's all I got right now.